on your feet. We're going to sing about our King this morning as we wake up. song this morning. We're going to sing to our God this morning as we wake up. We're going to sing to the one who brings us from death to life, who brings us from sadness to joy. We're going to sing this. Promise maker, promise keeper, you finish what
He's our God. The Lord our God is ever faithful, never changing through the ages. From this darkness, you will lead us. And forever we will say, you're the Lord. all about. Come on, let's sing this.
promises. And how many have had promises to them made that have been broken? Because we are human, we are often make promises that are impossible for us to keep. But God can make promises. And better yet, God keeps his promises. Because nothing is ever out of God's control. Today, we lit the first candle of Advent. We're going to call it the candle of promise. Did you know that there are more than 3,000 promises in the Bible? And most of them God has already kept. One of the most important promises God made that he's already kept is the promise to send Jesus. That's the whole reason that we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate because God kept his promise. God promised to send someone to save us, to save the world, to watch out for us, someone to be our king and our shepherd. God promised to send us someone who would give us peace. Christmas is our celebration of that promise kept. So today, as we begin our Advent celebration, let's remember that God is a God of many promises. He's a God who keeps all of his promises. And Christmas is the reminder of God's promise kept. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Let's sing that out. We're going to sing that. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Lord, I come.
Jesus, you're my hope and stay. years ago that, that put us in this place this morning, that put us right here, singing to you, singing about you, singing your praises. God, more importantly, I, I pray that we know this season, God, it's, it, it's about coming, coming together as family around a tree, but, but more importantly, it's about you. We're going to talk a lot about the unexpected things that happen, and I pray that those unexpected things that happen can touch our lives in the way that you want them to be touched, can touch our hearts. Thank you for bringing every single person here this morning. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have a seat. I know we can do better, uh, I, but I, I'll, I did this first service. I'll go ahead and do it here because apparently your excitement for hearing God's word is not the same as your excitement is for like the coffee bar, okay? So we're going to go ahead and have a little fun. I'm going to try to kind of get you guys going a little bit because I think you're going to have to help me preach this one just a little bit because God's got a word. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to point to this side, okay? When I point to this side, I want you guys to stomp your foot once. Okay, let's practice it. You guys ready? You all are, you're good. And this side, okay, I want you guys to clap your hands when I point. Okay, you ready? There we go. We're on fire now. Okay, so here we go. Now we're really going to try this kind of together. Ready? You and me going fishing in the dark, lying on our back. Come on, sing. You, you don't know the words, do you? Oh, my goodness. All right. So, anyway, uh, you, you're, you're much more awake today. So, uh, now that you've done the clapping exercise, you're on point. Next week, we might do the roller coaster thing. Um, it's, yeah, 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 there we go. We got it, man. And uh, so, I've got a whole, I got plenty of them. 
So we're going to start being as excited for when somebody's up here to break God's word. It doesn't matter if it's me or anybody else. It just God's word's going to be open. Our, 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 our hearts are going to be pierced. And so we should have a level of excitement, right? Right. Well, listen, we're excited uh, for this unexpected series. Uh, as a staff, we kind of felt like we needed to um, kind of, you know, not go into this Christmas season as we normally would. Uh, you know, sometimes Christmas is come and go, and I don't know that we necessarily appreciate um, the Christmas season like we should. And so we're going to do some unexpected things, okay, uh, throughout this. We're going to look at some unexpected passages. One that I'm going to be looking at today is unexpected. But listen, we're so excited, okay, you guys, like, I want to share this with you. We're so excited that we want you to take your excitement, and everybody, you should have these close to you, if not on a seat, grab one to go with you. Listen, I want to go ahead and make sure to clarify something. This thing right here, this unexpected invite, it is not bathroom reading material. That's why we made it nice and short. Um, if it was for the bathroom, we would have like had like four or five pages in this thing, okay? This is for those of you that have someone you might want to invite, but you don't really like to talk to people. Oh, there must be only like three of you here. Um, but no, you know, inviting can sometimes be uh, a little difficult. Here's what you can do. You can just literally hand this to the person, maybe at the gas station or somewhere in your community, and just hand it to them. And just, you can even walk away, you know. Like, don't do the weird, awkward walk away, like, you know, with your head down. But you just say, hey, there you go, and then, and then book it. And, like, they'll have this, okay? Because we want people to come out to this unexpected series because we believe in this series. We've put a lot of thought and heart into this thing and we believe that God is, wants to do something not just um, you know, in us here as a church but also those that we're going to be inviting. Oh my gosh, guys, come on. Like, it's an invite, all right? All right, I just wanna make sure we're good. Okay, so take this with you and, and invite someone because you know what? You, you never really know what the outcome might be. Some of you may actually be here because somebody invited you here. Some of you may be here because you got an invitation or found it on a bulletin board or something. You never know what the outcome might be by a simple invitation. And you know, we are outcome driven people, right? Like we love outcomes. Each and every one of us, we all love outcomes. I'm serious, we do. It's just the world has kind of brought this thing into us. Sometimes we love outcomes so much we don't wanna finish the work, we just want the outcome. That happens. Okay? But you never know if somebody's going to come in here and give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. And if they don't do that, maybe they come here and, and a seed gets planted. Either way, there's going to be an outcome from an invite. And, and we all, we, like I said, we, we love outcomes, especially the good ones. I've noticed that about the world today. We love good outcomes. Like, we really do. Like, it's like a, an awesome thing. Like, we are all about great outcomes. Okay, so like your, your kids get good grades, eventually the outcome will be what? They might get a scholarship. Um, you know, you, 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 your marriage is going good and your outcome might be you actually like each other. You know, uh, you might have a, a really good football team and the outcome might be they win the Big Ten Championship. Did you see what I just did there? My guy with the shirt on right here, Go Bucks, my man. Go Bucks. So, like, literally, I, I just want to make sure you all know what happened last night. I was just kind of catching you up. But we do. We love great outcomes. We really do. But one thing that I've also realized is that we're not real big fans of, of when the outcome isn't necessarily what we expect. Like, the bad outcomes. You know, the outcomes where maybe a marriage is struggling and it ends in divorce. Or, you know, maybe, um, you know, your overspending ends in financial hardship. We don't like the outcomes that we don't expect. We really don't. And I want to make sure we're all clear on something throughout your life. Whatever you decide, whatever thing's going to happen, whatever is going to take place, there's going to be an outcome that, that's going to present itself. You do understand that, right? Like there's going to be an outcome that's going to present itself. And we hope, listen, we're all about the good. We do. We want the good. But oftentimes, it's not the outcome that we expect. And I wonder if this is how Eve felt in the garden. 
Now, I know that something unexpected just happened if you're paying attention. We're heading into the Christmas season, and I'm going to talk about Adam and Eve. I know, that's weird, right? Like, what? No, you're supposed to be talking about Mary. No. We're going to talk about Adam and Eve today, and, 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 and we're going to look at this thing because it's really kind of unexpected. There's an unexpected outcome that comes. But not only are we going to look at Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, um, we're going to do it in an unexpected manner. You get this, right? Like, this whole theme of unexpected. Are you guys with me? All right, good. Like, uh, maybe I need to, like, pop out of a, you know, one of these poinsettias next week and see if you go, hey, did you expect that? Um, but we're going to look at it in an unexpected manner. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to look through it um, through this equation. E plus R equals O. How many have ever heard of that? Well, yeah, the people that attended first and my wife. Yep, all right, good. Uh, let me just break this down for you really quick, okay? This is, is kind of a strategy in leadership, just in life in general. And it's event, meaning that we're going to have events that take place, right, in our lifetime. And this is the response, what they call the R factor. How you respond to this event can dictate what we call the outcome. E plus R equals O. If you've never used this in your life, I promise you, this can actually help you even beyond what we're going to say today, okay? E plus R, event plus response equals outcome. And so we're going to break down Genesis 3 through this equation. And I want to show you some things that God put on my heart because as we head into the Christmas season, I truly believe in Genesis 3, there's some unexpected things that actually make sense to Christmas, okay? And so let's do this, all right? We're going to look at Genesis 3. Um, we're going to go straight. And we're going to read the first five verses. You ready? Uh, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will certainly die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing, God, knowing good and evil. So there you have it. It's a pretty familiar passage, right? And many of the guys get excited at this time when I start talking about Adam and Eve because they, they know the one that like ate first. And so like guys are like, yeah, this is, I love it when preachers preach about this because I get to tell my wife, you realize what happened. Uh, and she obviously got Adam to eat. I, I'm not even going to touch that, just so you guys know. I'm not going to go way in depth. But there are some really cool things in this passage that I want to talk to you guys about. And the first thing is the fact that there is an event taking place. This situation right here, event, uh, Eve is having an, an event, okay? And the, the serpent is coming to Eve. Now, at this point, we know Eve came from where? Adam, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Remember this, okay? I'm just kind of jogging your memories a little bit. And, and all of a sudden now, this serpent, as we know now, is Satan, is tempting Eve. And I think there's some things that you and I can learn from this. And one of the, the, the first thing that we, we have to remember from this passage is that this event that's taking place right here, this Adam and Eve, and, and, and she's getting tempted, this is not like a normal event, okay? This is huge, absolutely huge. Because as we'll see as we go, this one event like changes the course of history. So you and I, we deal with sin and temptation to this day because of this event. So it's like a pretty big deal, right? And there's some things that we can learn from it. And one of the things I saw in there was the way that, you know, it says that, that, that the serpent was crafty. The way that, that, that uh, he was coming at Eve. And uh, I don't know if you picked up on it, but the way that he, you know, the way that he uh, spoke to Eve, I, I really believe we can learn from this. And, it's, and it, he said, you know, did God really say? And what I've learned about the enemy and just what I've experienced from reading it, uh, it's, it's, it's important for us to note that sometimes the enemy, aka the world nowadays, because it looks a little bit different, but it's the world, they like to twist some things in regards to what God actually says. 
If you haven't picked up on that, I'm not sure you've been out of your house except for today, okay? The world does this. The world loves to twist some things, some really good things too, really beautiful things, some God things. Like, let's, let's take a look, okay? Like, you know, uh, marriage, relationships, sex, all that kind of stuff. Like, literally, the world likes to twist those things. And I think if for you and me, if we were to take a moment and pause and put ourselves in Eve's shoes, we realize some things. That it wasn't just Eve that gets tempted. Because of this event, you and I, we get tempted. All of us, right? Day in and day out. Literally, sometimes more times than once a day. We're tempted daily by the things that the world throws at us. We all have some kind of struggle that we deal with, and it's because of this very event that we struggle with those things. And like I said, because Satan tempted Eve and, the, and she fell, we're going to look at this, it, it, it now makes it so much more difficult for you and I. And those, those beautiful things that God created it ends up becoming an absolute mess. You know, the beautiful thing in marriage ends up being a mess, ending in divorce. The beautiful things in regards to sex ends up being a mess because we're doing it out of wedlock, things like that. All this stuff ends up becoming a mess because the world takes it and it just twists it. And this world even goes so far as to really making sure we understand how difficult this life is. It'll even take things, a beautiful thing like life, like the ability to breathe in, the ability to breathe out, the ability to live this life, and it will distort it. The world has, has put it out there that, listen, if you're struggling in life, you can just end yours. That's why the suicide rate all over the country is going up because this world has made it so easy and it's taken the beautiful things that God has created and it has literally distorted it. And it's sad. And all this happens because of this one event. Now, did you guys happen to catch Eve's response to the serpent? She says what? She says, hey, God didn't say we couldn't eat from any tree because, you know, Satan tried to twist it just like this world does. She says, he said, don't touch it and we can't eat from that one tree. Which we all now know is what? It's not accurate. It's not. God never said, do not touch that tree. That's what Eve kind of threw in there. And as we put ourselves in Eve's shoes and we come present day, I started thinking about this and I started realizing, hmm, here's Eve. She's responding to what Satan had tempted her with. And she says, well, we, we can't touch it. Which makes me wonder, how much was Eve really either paying attention to God or was really embracing or really remembering exactly what God said. Because God never said to not touch. He didn't say anything about that. But Eve kind of inserts that. And this is important because as we'll see in her response here in a moment, in this event, it's important. And the reason it's important is because she doesn't really exactly remember all or in detail of what God said she adds some and I thought about you and me as we we come present day and as we've established we all get tempted we all struggle we all go through some things do you really know what God says I, let me put it to you like this this book right here this book is the most important book in your life and you're going to be tempted day in and day out, each and every one of us. 
We're going to be tempted to falter, tempted to, to fight, fail. That's what Satan was doing to Eve. He knew if he could trip her up, he would win. And that's what he's trying to do to you and me through this world. He wants us to not live godly. He wants us to veer away. He wants anything. Listen, let me share this with you. If you are in a bad place in your life, I got great news for you. Satan is nowhere near you because he's already got you where you want, he wants you. But when you're kind of doing well and things are going awesome and you're like hitting rhythm with Christ, you better watch out because that's when Satan wants to derail you. And the way that you avoid that is this, by truly knowing what's in this. I see it happen all the time. I'm gonna go ahead and say this to the church family. Listen, I've been here like five weeks now and nobody has fired me. So you're stuck with me at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and say some things to you guys, okay? The first thing is this. There are gonna be times that you're gonna go through hard times in life and you're gonna to wanna to come and you're gonna to wanna to talk to me. And I'm cool with that because I like to talk. That's why I'm up here doing what I do. You know, I just like to talk. And you're gonna to wanna to come and talk to me. I want to go ahead and give you a heads up. I can go ahead and tell you the very first question I'm going to ask each and every one of you when you come to me in a difficult situation or a difficult time. And it's simply this. How is your time in God's word? How's your time in God's word? If I say a million things today, I want you to understand this very one thing. I want you to take this with you. This, this is everything you need to respond well that we're going to look at so Eve is in this event she doesn't quite get it right and I wonder for you and me how much do you really know God's word how, do you, how much do you really know what it truly says because listen we're all going to go through these events we're all going to have tough times we're all going to be tempted and when that event comes how we respond will dictate a lot by what we're doing with this and if this right here is nothing more than, than just a paperweight, I promise you, the way you respond won't be well, which is what happened to Eve, okay? Watch her response, all right? We're gonna look at, at Genesis 3, verse 6. Watch her response, okay? She's getting tempted. The event is taking place, and here's her response. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom... She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. That's the part where all the guys are like, yeah, it wasn't his fault. So now we know the event has taken place. She's been tempted, and her response is to take the fruit and eat it because it was pleasing to the eye. Because somehow, because it was pleasing to the eye, she's going to gain more wisdom. And so her response is to fall in the moment. Now, she has no clue just how you know, vast this mistake is going to be, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But she makes the mistake. She knows she's going against God. She makes the mistake, and i got to be honest with you. Can I be 100% honest with you? I kind of get it. I kind of get it because I've been there myself I've been tempted before and I've made mistakes I've been in events where my response hasn't been exactly what it should and if you were to take a moment and you were search your heart in life I promise you you will find something discover something where you you didn't do so hot yourself all of us and I know this because the scripture says all have what? Sinned and fallen short. All of us. That's not just, like, I don't get some free pass because I have a title or something. Just so you know. We all have sinned. We've all fallen short. We've all struggled. And we still have struggles today. I believe that there are many of us, even right now, that are still dealing with some things. Men, what about you? Is it a lustful eye, men, that you struggle with? Is it pride? Is it arrogance, anger, drinking? What is it? Because we all have a struggle. What about you, women? Is it, I need more companionship? 
Is it gossip? Is it self, the way you self look at yourself in the mirror? Is it the way you doubt yourself? Is it looking at other, what other people have in their family and, and, and kind of feeling bad about what you don't have in yours? Come on, women, what is it? Is it Hobby Lobby? Is it coffee? You know? I just, I just included every woman, just so you know. Like, just like that. We all struggle with this because at the very core of our heart is what? A sinful nature. And it all took place because Eve, Eve, she responded in the wrong manner. And if you're not careful, you will respond in the wrong manner. That's why we see, that's why we see marriages that when they end in divorce, we see broken kids. That's why when we see people that have committed suicide, their families are torn apart because it's, a, it's, it's huge. It's why we see, uh, you know, people putting things in their arms because they don't, they don't realize that what their response is doing has a greater impact. But Eve, she responds in not a good way. And I wonder for you and me if we can remember back to when you and I have responded in a not so good way. Because ultimately, with Eve... We know this last piece, this outcome. We know the outcome, right? The way that Eve responded, we know that the outcome is not a favorable one. You and I still deal with this because of what Eve, what took place back here in this event. Because of the way she responded, the outcome is that you and I deal with this. Then I wonder about you. And me, if you, when you, you know, I said earlier, and you all kind of like nodded your head, whatever takes place, whatever situation, whatever event happens through your response, there's always going to be a what? An outcome. Do you, you always think about that? Because you see, with Eve, I don't think she understood the full extent of her outcome. I do think that Eve knew she was going against God. But I don't think she understood the full extent of the outcome. Look at verse uh, 7. And let, me, let me look at this one real quick with you guys, because I, I, I think this, is, this will help me show, show you guys what's, what's taking place. It says, then, in verse 7, this is the outcome, then the eyes of both of them were opened, opened, excuse me, and they realized they were naked. How do you say that word? Yeah, you know, like, I, like naked. Uh, it just got really awkward in here, didn't it? Huh? All right. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So Eve, the outcome is not good. All of a sudden, their innocence was gone. Now they see each other as they truly are naked. None of this would have happened if Eve would have responded correctly if she wouldn't have fallen if she didn't take of the fruit right but her response dictated this outcome and Eve I don't think she knew the full weight and what about you you ever get in one of those places where your outcome it just doesn't look like what you thought it would you ever do that you go through an event, and then all of a sudden, it's not what you thought it should be or should have been. Eve, I think and I truly believe that she knew she was going against God, but she didn't know the vastness of her mistake. And I think for you and I, I think there's kind of two things that we need to look at here. Okay, One, sometimes you're going to make a mistake and you don't really know the full weight of the outcome. That's, that's okay. I get it. Sometimes you have to deal with that sin and just work through it. But I need to make sure that you understand Eve's position. Because it wasn't just an accident. It wasn't just a mistake. Eve knew she was going against God. And I wonder... For you and me, if we've ever been to that place where we know beyond the shadow of a doubt 
that we're doing something wrong and we just don't care. Because the world has what? Made it seem so easy. If we're not careful, we get to that place where we know we're going to do something wrong and we don't care the weight of our response. We don't care uh, about the actions of what's going to happen. We don't care. We're just doing it and we get to the point to where sin becomes so easy for us. Listen, if you haven't noticed in this world, morality is almost non-existent. That's why we have the issues that we have with marriage. That's why we have the issues that we have with abortion. That's why we have the issues that we have in this world. It's because it's made it so easy for you and for me. And sometimes we just get to the place to where we don't care. We could care less about the weight of how we respond when we're tempted. And not only that, Eve took Adam with her, right? And I think sometimes you and I, I don't think we care about the weight of our response when it comes to other people. Go back to the broken home with the broken children now. Go back to the person that's committed suicide. Their family doesn't understand. You see, sometimes we make decisions if we're not careful. And we could care less about our actions. All of this started with this event in the Bible. Now some of you here are like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I don't get what this has to do with Christmas, Joe, and, and unexpected. Well, let me share with you. So we know that Eve and Adam, they are now naked. And they sow fig leaves, and what do they do? They hide from God. They hide. Because they know they messed up. And God comes through the garden, and he's what? Look, looking for him. And he's like, what happened? As if God like already didn't know. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And, and what does Adam do? What every man does that I know, it's her fault. That's what I said when we had Josie. I'm kidding. I love my kid. And then Eve, Eve does the same thing. She passes the blame on to what? The serpent. It was the serpent's fault. I'm not even going to talk about sitting here playing the blame game. I could. But I want to show you something because God begins to, to dish out some consequences for what just took place. He begins to dish out some consequences. And I find it very interesting that he doesn't start with Adam and he doesn't start with Eve. He starts with the serpent, right? And as he unloads these consequences, I don't know if you've ever caught this before or not, but check out verse 15. Check it out with me. Verse 15. God says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. Her offspring, basically. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is what God is saying to the serpent. Do you know what that is? Maybe, you've, maybe you don't, but I want to share with you what exactly that is. He's saying the seed of the woman that you just caused to sin, that seed will crush your head. He's talking about, God's telling him about Jesus. This is the very first time in the scriptures that Jesus is mentioned. It's called foreshadowing. And God right here drops it in Genesis 3. Here we are heading into the Christmas season and we're all looking at Matthew, Mark, Luke, John and everywhere else. But here it is right here at the very beginning of Genesis. Here's Jesus. And no, by the way, 
You might strike his heel, Satan, but he is going to crush your head. I want you to stay with me for a second. Because as I began praying and thinking about this passage, struggling over it, I started realizing something. You know, God knew, God knew Eve's event. God knew Eve's response. And God knew what the outcome would be. Are are you with me? I don't know if you're quite catching where I'm going here. Right here in chapter 3, Here comes Jesus. God already had it like right then and there. He already knew. So he already knew about the event. He already knew about the response. He already knew about the outcome. What I'm trying to tell you is my God is already and always above and out in front in this game of life for you and for me. In other words, it should look like this. Every E, every R, every O, God already knows. So in other words, check this out. I'm drawing. God. He already knew. He already knew. He was already ahead of the game. And so for you and for me, what that means is every E, every event I'm going to have, every response I'm going to mess up, every outcome that's going to happen, My God is already ahead of it. So if I will trust in Him, I will know that I don't have to live in fear. I don't have to live with anxiety or worry. I don't have to go through this life alone. I already know my God is in control because He has already overcome. Eve didn't even know she made the mistake, but here's God already with the plan. God was already there. You see, what I'm trying to tell you is this. That what Eve did not fully expect, God did. And that's huge because as you and I go throughout life, you need to remember this very phrase. You need to remember, okay? You need to remember that what you are unexpecting in your life, the unexpected outcomes in your life, God has already expected. You've got to remember this. Because so many of us, we walk through and we think, well, God wasn't, he wasn't expecting this outcome for me. Listen, your unexpected outcome is exactly what God expected the entire time. Not just for us, but even for Eve. Clear back then. The question is, question is for each and every one of us is what a, what's our response to that what's our response to this because see today right now right now is an event God knew that each and every one of you were going to be here today each and every one of you. He knew you would be sitting here today. And listen, oh, by the way, when we're dismissed here in a little bit, there's gonna be an outcome that takes place. The question for you and for me is what's our response to him right now? Are you with me? You don't have to live in fear anymore. You don't have to live live in shame anymore. God's grace, God's mercy, God's love. It's already out there. It's already in advance. Meaning that whenever you feel defeated, you don't have to because you've already come overcome if you accept Christ into your heart and life. We don't have to live fear. We don't have to live fearfully right now. I know some of you in here are going, well, Joe, I, I've really messed up. I've messed up big time. I don't, I don't, I don't think God can forgive 
what I've done. I don't, I don't know if God can forgive everything that I've been a part of. I don't know if God can forgive everything I've seen with my eyes or, or all the things that I've done in my life. I don't know if God can forgive me for that, Joe. I'm really struggling. I'm in this bad place. Let me share something with you. I'll bet you Adam and Eve felt the same way when they messed up. And check out what God says in verse 21. It says, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and he clothed them. He clothed them. We're talking about Adam and Eve. We're talking about the beginning of sin that you and I deal with today. We're talking about, it was that big of an event and that horrible of a response. And the outcome is what you and I deal with today. And God, even in this moment, is saying, it's okay. I'm gonna clothe you because I love you anyway. And I don't know where you're at in your life. And I know you're saying, but Joe, I struggle. I don't know if God can, baloney. He loves you. And his son came for you. And as we head into this Christmas season, he died in the most unexpected fashion for you. And so whatever events you've been going through or whatever poor responses you've had or whatever outcomes you're not seeing in your life, he loves you and he wants to clothe you. The question is, What's your response to that? What's your response? And you want, let me go one step further. You see, God already knew the event. God already knew the response. He already knew the outcome. And just like right now, God knows what you're going to choose. each and every one of you. He knows those of you that are listening to this going, I need, I need to, I need to respond the right way. And he knows whether you're going to do that or not. The question is, what's he saying to your heart and to your life? Will you do me a favor and stand with me? and bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, your word, God, is incredible. Lord, you already knew. And even right now in this moment, in this event that we're in, right now in this service, it's an event. And you know everyone that's here, and you know the condition of our hearts, Father. You know the condition of our hearts. You know if there's some here that have responded the wrong way. You know there's some here, God, that, that may have sin in the way. But God, you even know that those of us here that have accepted you that maybe have kind of veered off a little bit. God, right now in this moment, I pray that you would speak to hearts as we focus on you for this moment, God, that you would help us to respond favorably to you. Listen, no one's looking around, all eyes are closed. I can't help but think that in this moment, there are some of you here right now. You know that you've not responded favorably to God's grace, to his love and his mercy. You know in your heart that you've got some things in there that you need to make right. You've got some things that you need to just unload on God and ask forgiveness for. You know that already. And the reason I can tell you that is because I know I've felt what it feels like before. And it's oppressing. It's a man, this guy's really talking to me type feeling. It's a, it's a conviction. But I also know that there's some of you here that have accepted Christ in your heart and life before, but you also know that here recently, you've not been responding the right way. And so I'm gonna do something a little bit different while we're here in this moment, because this is an event. I'm gonna give you a chance to respond the right way to God. 
if that's you and you know you need to respond the true way, the right way to God, I'm going to invite you up to the front to kneel and to pray. And we'll have people come and pray with you. But you've got to take courage and you've got to respond the right way. And so right now, I want to go ahead and open the altar up here. If you need to pray, if you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that there is something going on in your life that you know you need to unload on God, you need to accept Him for the first time in your heart and life, I want you to be bold. Take a step. Don't be afraid. Take a step. Come up here and let's pray. Let's leave it here. Come on. Somebody here, I know there's somebody here right now that's going, he's talking to me and I'm not going to go up there because it's weird. Listen, come on up here. There's nothing but love. There's nothing but forgiveness. There's nothing but grace. There's nothing but freedom up here in the front. So if you need to take a step out and you need to pray, you need to do that right now. Come on. Let's go. I know there's somebody here that needs to pray. Come on. There we go. We got one coming. Come on. People are starting to come now. Don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be bashful. Be courageous. Respond right now in the right way. And I promise you, God, He's already overcome. He's already known everything. So if you need to pray right now, come up here and pray. Don't hold back. Don't just sit there and go, you know what? I'm going to let this outcome be the same as every other outcome I've done with God. God is here. He's real. He wants to be a part of your life. And you need to invite Him in. And you need to stop trying to do this thing on your own. And you need to allow God. God to take a step and to plant in your heart his will his way his purpose for you come on it's still open if you if you need courage if you, listen take a step I promise you if you will take one step right now God will take the other 999 he will meet you here in this place and if you need to pray you need to get up here and you need to pray there's people that have come and they're going to pray you have nothing to be afraid of how you respond today will dictate how you walk out of this building and the outcome that's going to take a place. There's another one coming. If you need to come, come on. Come pray. Come on. Amen. Come on. As they pray up here, for those of you that are still standing, you can go ahead and grab a seat. We're going to just take a moment, allow them to pray, okay? help but think for a moment as I was up here and I don't know who this is for because it's for somebody as I was praying just listening there's somebody in here right now that is choosing to not respond favorably to what God has already done for you I don't know who it is I'm not going to ask who it is. But whoever it is, know this. I'm going to commit myself to praying for you this week. And I pray that God changes your life and will change your outcome. Because as you get ready to step out of here, you need to know you're walking away from Him. Whoever it is, I, I, I don't know. I beg and plead with you. If that's you, you need to come see me or one of the elders or somebody after service. Don't walk out of this building not madly in love with Jesus. Amen. Father God, I want to thank you, Lord, for this time. I want to thank you for the ones that came, for the work that was done, for the grace that was extended. Lord, I want to thank you for the grace that is extended to me, for the mercy and the love that is always extended to each and every one of us, God. Only you make that happen. And I just want to say thank you. 
thank you for expecting the things I never saw. Thank you for expecting, God, the unexpected outcomes that I was not aware of. Lord, I pray for all of us today that in this moment that we'll, we'll walk out of here, that we'll stay true to your word. And God, that we will, we will respond favorably to you each and every time temptation comes our way. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this time. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, man, I am so excited, you know, for you guys. And just do me a favor. Make sure that you're responding favorably to God and all that he asks and requires. Amen. Listen, we've got some awesome things that are going to be taking place over the next month. And uh, I got my friend Chad here. He's going to come and talk to you about some of them. But I want to just take a moment and say, if you're here for the first time, make sure you stop out at Next Steps. Okay, and if you're back for the second time, we want you to hook up with us over at the Nook. And uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn it over to Chad so he can tell you guys everything that's going on here. All right? Good morning, and thank you so much, Pastor Joe. Uh, Cornerstone held an event. Joe and his family responded, and what a wonderful outcome uh, we just experienced right there. It was just, it was great to, to hear the Word of God. Um, here are some announcements that are going on here at Cornerstone this week. <clears throat> uh, wow, God. Uh, this is an online event uh, through Facebook. Um, we're going to do it all through Advent, um, so you can just kind of study along with us. Jessica Pape uh, is kind of heading that up, so if you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free to talk to her about that. Tomorrow night at 4.45 at the United Methodist Church, uh, it's Cornerstone's turn to help out with second helpings. So if you guys are available, please bring a side dish. Uh, there's a lot of people in our community that, um, you know, want hot meals. Uh, they, go, they go to uh, the Methodist Church, and, you know, we'd be glad to help them out. Uh, downtown Manchester Window Walk is December 6th, uh, Thursday night from 6 to 7.30. Um, we've got the puppet ministry going on. We've got live nativity. Uh, so please come out. We'd love to see you guys down there and uh, be in with the community of Cornerstone. Uh, the Christmas Fun Day. The Kids Connect um, is hosting a Christmas Fun Day. Um, this is for kids ages pre-K through fourth grade. Uh, children will, um, will there will also be chi child care provided uh, for babies up through three years old. Uh, so if you guys can come and enjoy that with them, that'll be here at the church December 8th from 8.30 to 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you can um, RSVP uh, by signing up um, either one of our uh, tables out here you can sign up or on Facebook um, or by emailing Lisa or Melissa. This is a season. Oh, man, Joe. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just, that was great. Great sermon. I'm just thinking a lot, a lot about what uh, Joe said, and when we leave here, I know in the car, uh, my wife and my family, we're going to be talking about this uh, message all week, and uh, it was just really great to hear. Um, so this is a season for giving. Um, it's a great time to uh, start out with your uh, small group, seeing where you can help out. You know, um, it doesn't have to be a big deal, just adopting a family, you know, that, you know, has nothing. Um, just, you know, take them some meals or you know, give them a gift or just a, a nice card with just some nice words on it. It means a lot to people. So please reach out if you guys are in a small group to uh, help the community in that way. Um, and also the police and the EMS people that have to work the holiday hours, uh, think about them. Maybe take them a plate of cookies or something because, uh, you know, you're home with your families and they're away trying to protect us and be there if something happened. Just think about them too, please. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite our ushers forward. Um, if you'd like to give through technology, you can text CCC people to 77977. I did this this morning. It's not that hard. Um, you send a text, you get a link, um, and then you can put your information in. It can be a one-time gift, or you can just have it uh, keep re reoccurring. So it's kind of a nice way um, to give through technology. Uh, let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this day. What a great event. Uh, help us to respond correctly. Help us to think about you in all ways, especially the way we spend our money. Have us go to you first, because we know that your way is correct and true. We thank you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen.
weekend, 9 and 1030. Expect the unexpected. Have a good week. Lord, our God is ever faithful.